I'm Dre, the host and founder of The Dragon Network. For this week's video, I wanted to touch on the topic of precision medicine. I don't necessarily want to do a deep dive, but I do want to briefly chat about some of the things that need to be in place for precision medicine to be fully realized or enabled in the healthcare space, since we keep hearing so much about it, and I don't want us to think that it is just going to magically arrive someday. Before I get started, if you haven't already had a chance to subscribe to the channel, go ahead and do that now. And as always, throughout the video, if you like the type of content that I'm putting out there and you like what you see, don't forget to hit that like button. Let's get started by talking about what precision medicine is all about. So historically in the healthcare space, treatments and procedures have been focused on more of a one size fits most approach. So there are routine diagnostics like labs, radiologies, questions, things like that, that allow clinicians to focus on what it is they're most likely to be treating. And then they will take historical information as well as best practice documents for what works on the majority of the population in that situation. So thinking of things along the lines of a home remedy. So if you have a sore throat in the morning, which I hope no one does, you may try some tea with lemon and honey. There's tons of people out there that think that honey soothes a sore throat, so you're likely to try it for yourself. Same concept, only on, of course, a clinical and more medical scale. When we're talking about precision medicine, we're not looking at that one size fits most approach. We are looking at a very tailored and very specific what is likely to work for that particular individual at that moment in time with those particular comorbidities or ailments and presentations. The Precision Medicine Initiative defines it as, Precision Medicine is an innovative approach for disease treatment and prevention that takes into account individual differences in people's genes, environments, and lifestyles. So the part that I wanna talk about is not the technology that allows us to focus in on recommendations and treatment options and paths that we can take for a particular individual. It is the information that would be required in order to make that precision medicine guidance in the technology system actually meaningful. We are all aware from the world around us that technology is capable of some pretty phenomenal things. That is absolutely true for precision medicine and we can eventually connect those precision medicine platforms to our EHRs and we'll have them working interoperably, I have no doubts. What we need for it to actually produce the precision medicine guidance that we're looking for is the data, the information and the algorithms behind it. So as you saw from the definition, Genes, environments, and lifestyle are all factors that are going to be taken into consideration with precision medicine. So the medical side is actually fairly easy. We know when someone presents what they are going to tell us. We have a good idea of what diagnostics are going to be run. We'll get those results. We have all that information. Where we're going to see challenges is trying to get the rest of that information into these platforms so that we actually can create that targeted individualistic guidance. Once that is done, providers should be able to more accurately predict the effectiveness and the outcomes of certain procedures and treatments on that particular individual. Patients and clinicians would also be more informed on what type of actions and behaviors can be leveraged to maintain wellness over time or to prevent additional ailments from coming forward. So the precision medicine concept is incredibly powerful and incredibly important. It is, of course, first being targeted in very specific areas like cancer. So they're taking a very small subset of individuals and focusing there. But in order to come to the larger population, the things that we will need to figure out and the data that we're going to need to have to incorporate into these algorithms are things like genomic sequencing on everybody, which is no small feat, activity data. So what are the daily activity habits for all of the individuals. We are starting to see some of that with wearables, but we'll really need to start incorporating that into these big data sets so we can run algorithms and actually try to get more precision like targeted recommendations. So wearables are gonna be a big one or activity monitoring will be a big one. The next one is nutrition. So it's very challenging to understand what people's diets actually are. There's information that we can gather as far as grocery habits and dining out, purchasing, things like that. But realistically, understanding what food individuals are eating and what time they're consuming it 
requires them to document what that is. Currently, the people who are most focused on doing things like that are individuals who are trying to lose weight or individuals who are trying to enhance their performance in some sort of sport or aesthetic environment, so bodybuilders, things like that. They track their uh, food intake, sometimes very closely and very accurately, but the general population rarely does that. It's a lot of work. So it's not something that we can just say one day, okay, everybody start tracking everything you eat. They're not likely to do that. So we're gonna need to think about where we can get nutrition data from and what type of nutrition data is actually gonna be helpful. Certainly for things like precision medicine on patients with Crohn's and colitis and things like that, very, very helpful, but we'll have to figure out sort of how to track that, how to ingest it, and what we're gonna do with that data in a precision medicine platform. The other thing that we need for precision medicine to work is significant amounts of data on outcomes associated with medications and prior procedures, not just for the individual that we're looking at, but for the broad population so that algorithm can start to run those statistical models to say in this particular situation, for this particular set of criteria that's walking in, 87% of the time this outcome worked the best or 22% of the time this outcome failed that kind of thing. So the more data we have, the more accurate precision medicine algorithms can be. When you go to conferences, when you read white papers, when you look at things on the internet, you'll see that precision medicine is sometimes quoted as the next frontier, the next great thing, the next path we're going down. And I do think that that is in fact something that we're going to see and that is the direction that we're going in. I just want us to be realistic about the amount of IT effort it's gonna take us to get there and what some of those things are that we need to focus on to actually start enabling that. So if that is a direction that you wanna go in, if that is an area that you wanna pursue or that your organization is looking to pursue, start thinking about what those underlying foundation pieces are gonna to need to be and where that focus of effort is going to have to take place to enable that. In all likelihood, it is going to continue for a period of time based on pilot or focus areas. So oncology with particular cancer treatments, very specific genetic conditions, that's where we're gonna see the movement at first, but eventually we absolutely do want precision medicine to be in place for everyone. I mean, who doesn't want to go to the doctor or to a health professional and have a very targeted, very specific treatment and outcome path along with wellness guidance so that you can live your best, happiest, healthiest life. All of us do, but we need to make sure that the tech is in place to do it and that we have the underlying data that's going to enable those algorithms to work effectively. So I realized this video was quite short, but we just started having conversations about precision medicine and I saw the excitement on everyone's eyes, but I want to make sure that in the healthcare community, there's not false expectations on what it takes to actually get there. That's all I have for this week's video. I realized it was quite short, but I will be back again next week with, I think, a radiology topic. So I will talk to you again soon. I hope you have a great day.